This is a must-see event in Columbia, South Carolina, a sold-out arena, an event everything, everyone has been talking about. College game day in the house. We've had dunks in the pregame, a team that put women's basketball on the spotlight and one that is setting a new standard in the sport in the South Carolina Gamecocks with one of the best players in the nation. Orange and Garnet collide in Columbia right now. Tennessee is the fourth back to back championship. The SEC tournament title. National champion. Two premier programs in the women's game. This is the SEC on ESPN. South Carolina is the number one team in the country, and they have another conference title on the mind tonight when they meet another legendary program in the sport, Tennessee, in town to challenge the top team in the nation. And we welcome you inside Colonial Life Arena. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Holly Rowe is on the sidelines for us today. And Let's go. We have the top team. The atmosphere is incredible. It is sold out. College game day is here. This is what basketball is about. Dawn Staley has done it here. She has really built the attraction. The team, the whole town is excited about South Carolina women's basketball. And you see that here today. And one of the main attractions, it has to be Aaliyah Boston, who is one of the front runners for National Player of the Year. When you look at a player with the talent of Aaliyah Boss and you don't know if she can, how she can get better, you know what she's done? It's court awareness. She recognizes when it's her time in the situation of if the defense collapses on her, she passes out, but she doesn't stop working. Again, aware of where the defense is going to rotate to. And so on the drive, she spaces out because she's got that ability right there to knock it down from the perimeter. But it's also her impact on the defensive side of the ball. You watch, she's going to get switched out on a guard, but she understands she's got length. She's not going to get too close where she gets beat off the dribble, but she understands that she has the reach. So if the guard wants to shoot it, uh-uh. Aaliyah Boston is not going to allow that. Aaliyah Boston also on the verge of history tonight. She has 18 consecutive double-doubles. A 19th would tie her with the great Sylvia Fowles for the most in the SEC in a row. They're facing a Tennessee team, Holly Rowe, though, that is down a huge piece of the Tennessee puzzle. That's right, Tennessee suffered a huge blow on Thursday when their leading scorer and rebounder, Jordan Horston, went down with a left elbow injury. We're calling it a dislocation and a partial fracture, and she is questionable to return this season. They're hopeful that it will not require surgery, but Kelly Harper said, this is going to be a huge blow for us because it wasn't just the leading scorer, it wasn't just the leading round rebounder, it's the leader in almost every single category on our team. Their committee, by they have to have committee to replace her today, see if they're able to do that with energy. There's energy inside Colonial Life Arena tonight, and Tennessee will start with the basketball. So my question to you, Carolyn Peck, where do you start when you've lost two of your leaders, Key and Green and now Jordan Horston? Well, it starts in the locker room, and you got to let your team know if you're Kelly Harper. It's not on the shoulders of just one player. It just takes a little bit extra from everybody being very intentional in everything the Lady Vols do today. South Carolina's first possession, Brie Beal gives it up to Victoria Saxton. And Destiny Henderson, the point guard for the Gamecocks, number three in white today. One of the seniors honored on this senior day. And just off the fingertips of Zaya Cook, it will be Tennessee basketball. Now that lineup has changed for Tennessee, obviously, with no Jordan Horston. But you had a player like Ray Burrell coming off the bench. She is now inserted into the starting lineup. Well, Ray Burrell had to miss 12 games early in the season, and she is working her way back. But if there's anybody that you want to be able to depend on, 
It is Ray Burrell. She's expected to go in the first round of the WNBA draft because she can do so many different things and brings great energy to the floor. Alexis Dye misses the layup, and a foul is whistled on Tamari Key of Tennessee. Look, whenever you're facing Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina, your post players cannot get in foul trouble, and that's an early one on Key. And to get the foul on the rebound, you got to just recognize Aaliyah Boston's got better position than you do, and you've got to let that go because Tamari Key is the size on the floor for Tennessee. Yeah, it's not just Boston who's got the size down low, too, for South Carolina. It's senior Victoria Saxton. Zaya Cook elevates, bounces out, and Boston with the board. Get in there. If you haven't seen Aaliyah Boston play, buckle up. <laughs> She's going to work it on the glass. She and Victoria Saxton for South Carolina. I mean, that's what has made them so dangerous all season long. Alexis Dye with the rebound for Tennessee. She's a great rebounder. They will need that effort today. Walker back to Dye. Victoria Saxton rejection. Just look at the length and the timing of her. She's playing like it's senior day. Victoria Saxon, it is your day. Make the most of it. Tennessee 0 for 4 from the field to start this game. And there's going to be an offensive foul on Tennessee. Victoria Saxon, you want to know what her game, how to title it? It's right there with the blocks, and then this right here, getting it done down low in the paint. She is the paint master. I feel like Saxon gets overlooked sometimes because we do talk so much about Aaliyah Boston, but she's doing all those little things too, and these two mean so much to each other. Absolutely, and that's what you got to love about Victoria Saxon. She's not worried about, oh, the shine doesn't come to me. She just goes to work. She wears her hard hat every day. Henderson firing, rattles out. See, Saxon made that happen, that second effort. She creates extra possessions for South Carolina. Zaya Cook now six seconds on the shot clock. Goes over the top of the backboard. Oh, you mentioned it right when we started this game, Carolyn. What Dawn Staley has done with this program, it's been a huge year for her. She helped Team USA to a seventh straight gold medal with her former player, Asia Wilson, who has a statue outside of Colonial Life Arena. And she has also brought life and championships to South Carolina. When I talked to Dawn about, you know, how did you do it? She said, I know what success looks like. I know what it feels like. And she said, I know what it sounds like. And she has brought that here to South Carolina. Tennessee with its first field goal. Alexis Dye gets the credit for it. Tamari Key showing off her shot blocking ability. She is first in the nation in blocks. Uh, it's interesting that the go-to offensively has not been Aaliyah Boston to start this ball game. Destiny Henderson trying to create. Easy buckets under the basket, missed. Do you think it's intentional they're not going to Boston? I don't think that's the intention that yeah. Don Staley wants. Yeah. You've had Zaya Cook take a couple of shots. You've had Destiny Henderson looking for her offense as well. That's where South Carolina needs to go. And Tamari Key got a hand on that. This could be a really fun battle inside with Key in Boston. Absolutely. And remember, Tamari Key already has one foul. Why would South Carolina not go back at her and try to get her into some foul trouble? Yeah, Tennessee does not have a ton of depth in the post to bring off the bench. They lost Kian Green with another knee injury. She's had several in her career. But she was the first off the bench down low for Tennessee. There's Kian Green with the blue headband sitting on the second row there. A leader, Kelly Harper, said she brought so much more than her stat line to this team. Leadership. Yeah. The maturity of Kian Green on the court is huge for Tennessee. Zaya Cook for two. Cook has played so well in the last two games, shooting the ball very well. And it's all come from 
getting in the gym, the confidence. And when you see the ball go through the hoop, then you relax a little bit, stop pressing so much. There's a great move on the other end by Tamari Key right over Aaliyah Boston. Boston with range, no. It will stay with the Gamecocks. Sarah Puckett's got her hands full with the responsibility of trying to keep Taria Saxton off the glass. She didn't even turn and go with her backside. She just face fronted her to box out. Yeah, Puckett, a freshman, going against Victoria Saxton, the senior. South Carolina keeps getting more and more chances, but they are just one for their last 11. Traveling violation on Victoria Saxton. Hey, a sold out crowd in Columbia today. We got a 6-6 tie between Tennessee and South Carolina. Kelly Harper in the huddle, third season as the head coach of her alma mater, where she had so much success under Pat Summit, won three national championships. And in this offseason, it was really important for her to make sure this team knew the history of Lady Volunteer Basketball. They read Pat's book, Reach for the Summit, and that talks about Pat's definite dozen. It's like priorities for life and for on the court. Be a competitor is one of those. Change is a must. Handle success like you handle failure. This is posted in their locker room. She wanted to make sure that they understood what this program, the foundation that it was built upon. And guess what? We've seen characteristics of Pat Summit's teams in this year's group. Well, the focus has got to be on the defensive side of the ball. And you look in Division I, they're holding opponents to 34% from the floor and the rebounding margin plus 14, almost 15 rebounds a game. That has become a point of emphasis for this Tennessee. You build it on the defensive side, then the offense will come. And Tennessee has bought into that as Ray Burrell tries to shoot over her defender, Bree Beal. It rattles out. But that expectation, we heard Andrea Carter talk about it on College Game Day. That expectation that we saw for Tennessee in the past is now here. And Holly, you were just in Tennessee's huddle. Well, guys, the biggest issue right now that Tennessee's facing is on the boards. Jordan Harston, of course, we told you she is out for this game. She's their leading rebounder, and they are getting crushed on the glass right now, 12 to 4. That's where this game has to be won. Two of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country and conference. Tennessee not doing a great job there right now. Yeah, Holly, I mean, look at the numbers, these ranks on these two teams where they stack up among the nation in rebounds. They are known for crashing the glass, but you're right, we're losing, or Tennessee is losing. We don't get to see her today. Jordan Horston, that's 9.4 rebounds a game. And that's even from the guard spot, so that helps out Tamari Key getting on the glass or Alexis dying. When you don't have that from the guard position, that really hurts. Traveling violation on South Carolina. And we told you Jordan Horston out for an undisclosed amount of time with a fractured dislocation of her elbow in their last game. It was with a minute 45 left in the game against Alabama on Thursday. And watching that when she went down, it was, it had to be extremely painful. That's a big shot by Ray Burrell. Hey, the Lady Vols are not feeling sorry for themselves. And one of the things we talked to Kelly Harper about last night was, remember, South Carolina lost to Missouri, and Missouri was playing without Asia Blackwell. Who's their best player and averages a double-double on the season. If you're a coach, why do you bring that up to your team facing a team like South Carolina? To give them confidence that it has been done before, because you start worrying about your teammate. You know, you're emotionally connected to Jordan Horston and she's done so much for your team. As a teammate, you can look at that and go, oh, woe is me. Or you can look at, you know, somebody else was a man down, so now it's gotta be a man up. And so somebody else and everybody really has to step up in the absence of Jordan Horston and even play for her. Try to do something special for her since Jordan Horston isn't able to play today. Yeah, the impact of Horston is great. 30% of Tennessee's points have been impacted by Jordan Horston this season, whether it's scoring or assisting on those. Tennessee with its first lead here over the number one team in the nation. And Ray Burrell has found her shot. She's the one player that Tennessee can look to. I mean, she moved into the starting lineup last season, was expected to come in and have a fantastic year in her senior season. And when she got injured in that first game, 
you thought, uh-oh, what's happening? But she has worked her way back. Yeah, Tennessee did not rush her back. That was extremely important. They took their time to make sure she was ready to go. Missed those 12 games, but she's back and in the starting lineup tonight. Let me tell you, South Carolina's offense looks out of sync to me. Nothing in rhythm at all, but the offense is clicking for Tennessee. And Ray Burrell is doing a nice job using screen, spacing out, and when she catches it, it doesn't take her but a second to pull the trigger, and she was able to knock it down. And Burrell with five points, two of five shooting early on in this game. It was a struggle on both sides just to get started in this one offensively. No Aaliyah Boston on the floor right now for South Carolina. And Aaliyah Boston only two points. Burrell's three doesn't go into the hands of Destiny Henderson. You want to see South Carolina go inside? I want Victoria Saxon to get the basketball with Sarah Puckett defending her. Smart Destiny Henderson comes and gets the basketball. The senior point guard, seven seconds. Saxton looking for Leticia Ami here. Four turnovers now for the Gamecocks. Yeah, that's it. Saxton needs to touch the basketball, but I don't think at the high post. It'll be South Carolina basketball. Victoria Saxton basketball that slammed into the side of her face. She's okay. That's the second foul on Sarah Puckett. Tennessee's fifth foul, and Boston and Tamari Key are waiting to check back in. Key comes back in the game with one foul. We've got to keep track on Aaliyah Boston going for the 19th consecutive double-double. Saxon gets the first one. This is the second. And that's going to be a foul on Victoria Saxton. So Aaliyah Boston will check back in this game, replaces Saxton. The last 18 games, Aaliyah Boston has had a double-double. She is one shy of Sylvia Fowles' record of 19 in a row in the SEC. You see her numbers during that time frame. But right now, Boston with two points, two rebounds. And we have seen Aaliyah Boston, too, in this streak. She's had similar averages, similar numbers on the season, even against top 25 great teams. She's averaging 17 and a half points per game and 12.7 rebounds per game against ranked opponents. Right. So it's not pad and stat. She's not getting big numbers against teams that aren't very good. She's doing that against some of the best teams in the country. And South Carolina has played 10 ranked opponents, and they've beaten all of them. Yeah, she's got the best record. Only Texas has played 10 ranked teams, but they're not 10-0 like South Carolina. Offensive foul on Alexis Dye. That's her second. Tennessee already has six team fouls. Well, Tennessee has brought in Emily Saunders down low, number 31 in orange. Tess Darby also in the game for the Lady Vols. Tess Darby, one of the best shooters on the Lady Vols squad from the three-point line this year. South Carolina could use a shooter. They have been struggling, only 22% from the field. That's a high percentage shot because it's Aaliyah Boston. That's what I've been waiting for. That's how you start the ball game. That's how you send a message. You gotta establish Aaliyah Boston from the start. And then she gets a rebound. South Carolina loves to run in transition. Zaya Cook, coast to coast. You see what a bucket by Boston can do for this team? Why not start that way? And then a block, but she gets called for the foul. 
And Brooklyn Miles is going to take it up. But look, you know when you go to a restaurant and you order up, this is what you do. You order up Aaliyah Boston and then you let the big girl eat. <laughs> she can go inside and get it done. The South Carolina special. That's it. Bluebird, come early. I'll pay full price. I don't even need a discount yeah. for that. <laughs> Brooklyn Miles can't complete the three-point play. But Tennessee has still tied this thing under a minute to go in the first quarter. More transition points for Carolina. Hemi. They're taking advantage of Tennessee subbing in Emily Saunders. Well, if you attack inside instead of settling for outside jumpers, establish that right there inside, then you'll have more time, more composure on the perimeter. But you've got to establish those paint points early. And man, they're loving it in Columbia, South Carolina. A sold out crowd. This is what they came to see. A battle between two of the best programs historically in women's college basketball. Shot clock still on for Tennessee. Got to get the ball to Ray Burrell. Jordan Walker, short. will take her time. Down to Leticia Me here. Second foul called on Emily Saunders. Sends Leticia Me here to the free throw line. 3.2 seconds left here in the first quarter. First one's good. I want to remind you, coming up today at 3 Eastern over on ESPN, Penny Hardaway in Memphis taking on SMU at Moody Coliseum. Memphis, they've won six straight, including the last two on the road at Houston and Cincinnati. That's today at 3 on ESPN. Brooklyn Miles with the heave. South Carolina leads it after 10 minutes. Aliyah Boston, the front runner for National Player of the Year. We take you back to her roots. Holly Rowe has more when we come back. Aliyah Boston is from the small island of St. Thomas and left home at just 12 years old to pursue her dream of playing basketball in the United States. And guys, she has kept that island spirit alive. We chose to have a high school jersey for you because you are the most decorated high school basketball player from the Virgin Islands in our history, so I wanted your high school accomplishment. So, there it is. It's gonna be... Yeah, it's gonna hang right over there. The goats in here! Going home with Aaliyah Boston, she is a huge celebrity. Everyone on the island knows who she is. That is a very famous bar. Tim Duncan's best friend on the island runs that, and her jersey was going side by side of the other very famous basketball player from the Virgin Islands. Holly, I get chills watching that. I mean, that's an incredible moment. You could see how much that meant to Aaliyah Boston. And hanging, have your jersey hanging next to Tim Duncan. Wow. She, she said it, a goat. She's got her, her jersey hanging up there also. Boston, four points, three rebounds. She's on the bench right now for South Carolina. And so it has been a battle in the first quarter. Courtney Loud, Carolyn Peck, and Holly Rowe with you. Zaya Cook holding the follow through. Tennessee tried to switch things up, going a zone, but Zaya Cook hot. Destiny Henderson has been shooting the ball well. I don't know if that's a good idea. Tennessee has had to try a few different combinations. They've had some foul trouble already as Ray Burrell just goes right to the basket. 
This is a player that averaged almost 17 points per game last season. Her numbers are down a little bit this year because she missed 12 games with an injury. Well, as well as Tennessee was playing early in the season, Kelly Harper wanted to be careful not to disrupt the flow as she worked Ray Burrell back into the lineup. Zaya Cook. Letitia and me here, possession arrows pointing to Tennessee. Against the zone, moving the ball, making sure that it doesn't get stuck. Make the defense have to shift. When you do that from one side to the other, then that buys your shooter's time. That's all Zaya Cook needs. And then on the other end, the Lady Vols have Ray Burrell that is in attack mode. She is looking to get buckets for the Big Orange. Tennessee going with a little bit bigger lineup. They sub out Brooklyn Miles and bring in Caroline Stripling. Puts Testardi at the three. Inside to Burrell. Lily Grissett with the rebound. Rebounding has gone South Carolina's way. They are out rebounding Tennessee 18 to 9. They've got so many different players. You can't say, well, just keep Aaliyah Boston off the glass or Victoria Saxon off the glass, because if you keep them off, somebody else for South Carolina is going in after. Yeah, they're third in the nation in rebounds per game. But guess what? Tennessee's second. Tamari Key welcome, working on Camilla Cardoso, who is back, did not play in their last game with an ankle injury, but I got to watch practice yesterday, and she was a full go. Transferred in from Syracuse as Boston comes back in. So look at the size right now for South Carolina, Cardoso and Boston in the game. Well, and you've got Lily Grissett, oh, who's yeah. great size on the perimeter that can swing 3-4. To start this game, South Carolina went away from their bread and butter. They weren't going inside, but that's how they took the lead right at the end of the first quarter. Well, when you need to really cut the water off because Tennessee was on a roll, you need a bucket, then you get back to what you know you can get production from, and that's getting the ball inside, in the paint. Seven seconds in the shot clock. South Carolina's running out of time. Henderson. Rebound, Aaliyah Boston. She's like a safety net. Not only is South Carolina going, or Aaliyah Boston going for that double doubles record, but South Carolina is going for a share of the SEC regular season title if they can win today. Set overshoots on the layup. Boston. South Carolina's defense. Boston can play just about anywhere on the floor. And we saw it on defense there, but watch her offensively not give up on the play. You got to make contact and keep her off the glass. Try to lock her up because she's not one that's going to stop working to go get the basketball. We talked about before the game, she's on a business trip and she's right here in Columbia. She has come here to do work. You know, there's been a, a trio of players talked about in, in the National Player of the Year conversation. Obviously, Aaliyah Boston, Caitlin Clark, and Alyssa Smith. But Boston impacts the game on both ends of the floor so much. To me, it's no contest. Those players, Alyssa Smith and Caitlin Clark, are great players. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I am not dismissing their talent, their accomplishments of what they've done this year. But Aaliyah Boston is number one in efficiency rating. So that just talks about the impact, positive or negative, that she has when she's on the floor. And she is number one in the country. Numbers don't lie. Yeah, she impacts the game positively more than anyone else in the country. And that's part to her off-season work that she put in in the weight room and also with her game. So she can do things like that. Automatic. Woo. We asked on Staley, is there an X factor to Aaliyah Boston that puts her as the player of the year? And she said, no, there's not. Because she is just that all-around player that works hard every day that is consistent. Yeah, she brings it every every game and 
really, there's no wasted motion. When she's on the floor, I don't see her taking plays off, and she's directing traffic. She's almost like the point guard in the center position. Now, Coach Staley's told us numerous times she is not afraid to ask the question. She wants to know why. Three Beal trapped underneath. Orange jerseys, jerseys all around her. We mentioned her off-season training. Well, it also helps that, you know, you got to work out with Tim Duncan. Well, the thing about Aaliyah Boston is she's always trying to find ways to make her game better. Well, her father is good friends with a best friend of Tim Duncan and got them connected. She went and spent five days at Tim Duncan's house working out. And, in, and I, I asked Tim Duncan, what did you do to help her? And he was very quick to say, Look, she already had the skills. They just worked out, and then it kind of happened organically. She would ask questions about how to do this or that. He said the biggest thing that they talked about was court awareness and court recognition. He said she had to understand, you're the best player on the floor. You're going to attract a lot of attention. Now, what do you do when that happens? And so that's really helped her take her game to another level this season. Henderson in the corner. You see what South Carolina has done. Ray Burrell is leading Tennessee in scoring right now. Who's Gardner? Bree Beal. Bree Beal. Bree Beal is always on the best offensive player for whoever South Carolina is playing. Aaliyah Boston's numbers already eight points and five rebounds here in the first half. Aaliyah Boston. She's leading this Gamecock team. They have championship on their mind, and she has brought it. The Can we just have a moment for the fans, if you will? That's what South Carolina calls their fan base, the fans, and they have sold out Colonial Life Arena. Women's um, College Game Day was here on site the first time in 11 seasons they have been at a women's game. The atmosphere has been electric, people lining up outside. And we've been here for, what, three days now? And they were talking about it on Friday. All over the, all over the town of Columbia, South Carolina. And these fans, they've showed up and they've shown out. They have been loud and participants in this game as well. And this is not a one-time thing. South Carolina has led the, the nation in attendance the last seven seasons. I have to be honest, sometimes I catch myself watching fans in the crowd. They're calling things out. They're yelling. They are a very educated crowd about women's basketball. Camila Cardoso, the transfer from Syracuse with the bucket. This game was tied 13 all, and since then, South Carolina has gone on a 17 to 6 run. It's been a tough few days for this Tennessee team. You lose your leader in points, rebounds, assists, and Jordan Horston and steals. She went down Thursday with an injury. Not only do you have to make changes to what happened in the Alabama game when Tennessee lost on Thursday, you have to adapt for losing her and get ready for the number one team in the nation. Boston got stuck under the basket. And it'll be Tennessee basketball. Let's check in with Holly. You guys in that last Tennessee huddle, Kelly Harper talking to her team about not running enough actions below the free throw line. Your point is a good one. They lose their leading scorer, leading assister on Thursday. They've only had one practice to try to put in some new offensive actions. This will be a very different offensive team without Jordan Horston right now. And they've got to do more action to make it more difficult on the South Carolina defense, just like that. You're absolutely right, Holly. And the, the other thing about statistically you lose from having Jordan Horston the competitive fight that she brought on the court. And so somebody else has got to step up, bring that toughness. And why not get the ball to Tamari Key and let her establish inside in the paint. One of the best ways to defend Aaliyah Boston is to get her in some foul trouble. Have her go to the bench and then you don't have to worry about going against her. So Aaliyah Boston will go to the bench because that is her second foul. Eight points, eight rebounds for Boston. Tamari Key at the free throw line. But Alexis Dye gives Tennessee another possession. Yeah. 
with the Miles back to die. Swatted away by Cardoso. But that's one of the things, every time we do a Tennessee game, and I talk to Kelly Harper, and she'll start out, I'll ask her about the offense, and she'll go, Carolyn, you're going to love this. We are making a more concerted effort to get the ball in the paint. Really? You like that? I do. I love it. <laughs> that is what has helped Tennessee have so much success this season. There's two seconds. The shot clock is being reviewed. So you heard our official, they're going to take a look at the shot clock. There's two seconds showing it, showing on it right now. Paint points have been such a big part of Tennessee's offense this season. They average 35.8 points per game in the paint. Well, and, that, and that's not just getting the ball to Tamari Key. It's guards, and especially having Jordan Horshin going off the bounce, get two feet in the paint. This is what they're looking at, keeping an eye on the shot clock here. I think waiting to see when the ball broke the plane to be officially out of bounds. Maybe it goes to three seconds. Still showing two seconds right now on the shot clock. So they're confirming that two seconds is correct. Brooklyn Miles to inbound. Alexis die under the basket. Oh, they call a foul on Victoria Saxton, her second. I think what the the official saw that Saxon jumped forward, got her with the body. Remember, defensively, you can go side to side or backwards. But if you move into the defender, that's going to be called for the foul. So that puts Aaliyah Boston, Victoria Saxton, and Bree Beal on the bench, each with two fouls. But those are your two bigs right there. Like that's the three, three of your big time rebounders sitting on the bench over there as well. If you're Tennessee, how do you attack South Carolina now with those three on the bench? You have the hip coming forward with Victoria Saxon, but I think that you do continue to go inside to Tamari Key. You've got to move her around a little bit now. You can't just go with Camila Cardoso on her back, but move her around, screen for her, get her on the move to the basket. Possession arrow to South Carolina as Tamari Key with the stop of Sanaya Rivers. The freshman out of North Carolina. Well, and then offensively for South Carolina, they've got to move the ball around as well. Because you know, you've got Tamari Key sitting in the paint inside. That's a lot of length to try to score over for your guards. Right. Cook's shot is short. Cook has seven points today, the second leading scorer for Carolina behind Boston. Rejection. It's the thing South Carolina has. No Aaliyah Boston, no Victoria Saxon on the court. What do they go to? Camila Cardoso. More size just coming in from the reserves of South Carolina. An air ball by Ray Burrell. Camila Cardoso was the ACC co-defensive player of the year last year when she was at Syracuse. What an addition for Carolina. First foul whistled on Brooklyn Miles of Tennessee. Ricardo says she's a shot blocker, she's a rebounder, and she's also a post that will run the floor. That's a, that's a triple threat. No points for South Carolina in over two minutes. Trying to shoot through traffic was short on the initial layup. That's 17 offensive rebounds, though, for South Carolina. But only six second chance points. Six seconds. 
traveling violation on Jordan Walker of Tennessee. Missed opportunity. You got a freshman guard, Gray Burrell. Walker should have given it up and let Burrell go to work. And Ray Burrell is now their leading scorer with no Jordan Horston available. But South Carolina hasn't been able to extend this lead. They've missed their last eight shots. And then an offensive foul called on South Carolina. It's on Cardoso. That's two on her. Well, they called Cardoso moving on that screen. Repeating the progress of Ray Burrell. That's a good call. So now your three main bigs, Cardoso, Saxton, and Boston on the bench with two fouls. Dawn Staley going to her bench once again. The freshman, Saniya Fagan, number 20 in white, has entered the game. I like Fagan. She brings some energy defensively. She doesn't just stand behind the post. She moves her feet. Alexis Dye is going to try to get around her. That was a great look, but Tennessee can't finish again. Two great looks for Tennessee. Uh, Tamari Key keeps the ball high, gets the rebound over a me here, but just not able to get the finish. Those are the buckets you're going to go back and look at film of, oh, you could have closed the lead going in at halftime. They are four for 12 on layups. <laughs> South Carolina trying to end a scoring drought. Rivers almost losing the basketball. Don Staley's trying to call timeout. We step aside, but only for 30 seconds. Timeout, South Carolina. Under a minute to go in the second quarter, Don Staley was Trying to run out onto the court, she had called for timeout, but none of the officials saw her. She was trying to get their attention as the shot clock continued to wind down, and South Carolina will get that timeout off. Right now, though, it's a little chaotic out there for South Carolina's offense. Look, I think that this atmosphere is affecting everybody. It's affecting South Carolina, it's affecting Tennessee, and it's affecting the officials. Like, everybody's got to settle in right now in this ball game, got to regroup, and they go into the locker room at halftime. South Carolina doesn't have a field goal since Boston went to the bench with her second foul. Yeah. Foul on Tamari Key, that's her second. I think that's just how Don Staley, she wanted that timeout, called out for recognizing the defense was going to play a lot of attention to Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson, and then snuck Saniya Rivers down low on the baseline. Going to either get the bucket or do exactly that in getting Tamari Key her second foul. It puts Saniya Rivers, the freshman, she was number three overall, a part of that Again, number one recruiting class for South Carolina. Well, tomorrow's Big Monday on ESPN at 7 p.m. Armando Baycott in North Carolina hosts Louisville at the Dean Smith Center. Then at 9, number seven, Baylor taking on Oklahoma State in Stillwater. A couple of rematches, both of those games coming up on Big Monday tomorrow. Thirty-one point five seconds left in the second quarter. There's about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Brooklyn Miles has the basketball for Tennessee. Alexis Dye, another missed layup, but a steal by Miles. Walker, air ball. Zaya Cook launches a shot. 20 minutes in the book, South Carolina, a scoring drought. 
to end the first half. No field goals in the last four minutes and 30 seconds, but they're up 32 to 23 at the break. Don Staley is standing by with Holly. Coach, a lot going on here in this building. How do you think your team's been able to settle in and absorb and focus on basketball? It's a, it's a dog fight, so I don't think anybody's going to settle in. Um, I hope we can, we can get this crowd energized and play a little bit better. But it's, it's the atmosphere, you know, it's the environment. I knew we would come out and play a little bit of agility. We got we to gotta do a better job and not fouling. I was just going to ask about your foul trouble. Too many people on the bench, and your offense struggled when that happened. How do you change that? We're, we're, we're at full strength now. So we got Camilla back. We got L.A. back. So, so we're, we're pretty good. We got to put some points on the scoreboard, and we're not doing a very good job at that. So we got to get efficient with that. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. South Carolina up 32 to 23 at the half. Our halftime report with L, Steph, and Andrea is coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome into halftime of South Carolina, Tennessee, here at Colonial Life Arena. A big matchup and one that we thought was going to have her favorably for the home team because of all of the issues that Tennessee has had. But if Kelly Harper was to tell her team that you're within 10 at the half, what was she saying to them at the half? Yeah, well, I think they've competed at a high yeah. level. And they've done a really good job in the defensive end of the floor. And thankfully for Tennessee, Ray Burrell has shown up on the offensive end. I mean, she ha has been very good. She's been able to put the ball in the hole. You've got to get more production. Unfortunately for Tennessee, not able to take advantage when Aaliyah Boston was on the bench with two fouls. Yes, I think that was the toughest you know, part for Tennessee. Is South Carolina wasn't scoring, but Tennessee wasn't yeah. scoring either. They weren't capitalizing, missing a lot of layups. And I think they were taking tough shots. I don't think they work to get good shots, good looks at the basket. When Victoria Saxon and Aaliyah Boston are out of the game, you've got to get more ball movement until you get a clean look, and you just got to focus and finish. It's easier said than done, but Tennessee didn't capitalize on the best players for South Carolina being on the bench. Well, I think at one point, Courtney said, what, like four of 12 yes. from, for layups, right? But but your ball movement, I mean, that's key. you got to get the ball moving from side to side. Tennessee is trying to attack and get everything done on the first or second pass in offense, and that's not going to work against South sure. Carolina. Yeah, two of the best rebounding teams in the country. Meanwhile, South Carolina killing them on the boards, in particular offensively, 32 to 19 in favor of South Carolina right now. So if you're Don Staley, right, how are you telling your team or what are you telling your team to make this crowd, this sold out crowd at Colonial Life, feel a little bit better about where they stand right now? Well, I, I love them pushing in transition. I'm okay. telling Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson, if nobody is in front of you, keep going. Yeah. If you have a straight line to the basket, don't stop. On the opposite in Tennessee, you have to turn them. You cannot give Destiny Henderson and Zaya Cook straight lines down the court. It's just too easy. But for South Carolina, it's excitement plays. And the block shots for South Carolina come when the defensive rotations are clean. So just a little cleaner on the defensive end. And I, th I think you're exactly right about offensively. And, and you can see right there, inside and outside, getting the Leah Boston touches, attacking the paint. I love what you were talking about, Drea, really pushing in transition. You can do that off a of missed shot. You can do that off a of made shot. But establishing the perimeter, and then it opens it up for the outside. And there's not as much pressure on your offense to knock down shots when you're getting some easy buckets early. And this is exactly when South Carolina is at their best, when they can push in transition, get some layups, or spot up at the three-point line. And of course, we are also on double double watch, right? With Aaliyah yes. Boston. She's chasing the 19th consecutive She'll double get it. double. Get it. She's going to get it. She's at eight and eight right now. We feel like she's going to get it, right? Okay, so she could make some history, at least tie some history today. Someone in the crowd just told me they're feeling a little bit cocky here at Colonial Life. And needless to say, they should a little tighter than maybe we thought as we prepare for the second half of USC and Tennessee. A 10-point game right now, which you would say, if you're Kelly Harper, is pretty good. But we knew they were going to have to pick up some of the production when they lost Jordan Horson. So who would you want to see from the Lady Vols step up in the second half? Yeah, I mean, Ray Burrell's doing what she can do, certainly. But Tamari Key inside, they have to find a way to get her more touches. And she has to be more efficient with knocking down shots. Alexis Dye. Alexis Dye was a bucket getter. She needs to get back to that aggressive mentality and go to the hoop. Yeah, I think Jordan Walker as well. Maybe not scoring as much, but getting to the paint, attacking hips. Put your shoulder on hips, get to the paint. Good things happen for Tennessee when you get in the paint and then kick, right? Getting those good shots. Jordan Walker can facilitate for Tennessee. Yeah, and they got to take care of the glass. I mean, they are just getting yeah. crushed on the glass. Yeah. Uh, we can call these trap games sometimes, right? You have one team that's sort of slipping a little bit, floundering, if you will. One team that's been dominant, number one for 15 
straight weeks. If you're South Carolina, what do you do in the second half to assure that you walk out of here with this win? Well, you play through Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston, every time the ball comes down the floor, she has to touch the basketball. Unless it's a wide open shot or a wide open layup, <laughs> amazing things. Aaliyah Boston, in my opinion, has the best basketball IQ on the team. The way she reads, even with the ball in her hands, has to go through her. And it doesn't matter where she gets it. No. She can get no. it on the perimeter. She can get it on the block. She yeah. can get it on the wing. It doesn't matter where. Every defense's game plan is for Aaliyah Boston. And you mentioned a little bit of a trap game or a slip up. I mean, I'm sure Dawn Staley was saying, OK, y'all thought Jordan Horson wasn't playing, and you took a little bit of a yeah. break. Now in the second half, they're going to lock it up on the defensive end. They're going to be active. They're going to get out in passing lanes, and they're going to look to get up and down the floor. Well, you say being active and being in passing lanes, too. If I'm on the Tennessee side, I'm thinking they're going to have a lot of energy. I'm using shot fakes. When I get into the paint, especially Victoria Saxon, Aaliyah Boston, they've got two fouls. Get into the paint, use shot fakes, get them up in the air, go into them, try to draw that third foul. That'd be the smartest thing. Very shot fakes, yeah. backdoor cuts, all that. Get the defense shifting. Yep. I have to ask you guys very quickly because, again, Aaliyah Boston stands on what could be the precipice of history as she chases her 19th straight double double. It looks like she's going to get it. Yep. What would it mean for her to tie the great Sylvia, Sylvia Fowles? Well, it's just incredible because of the player that she is, the person that she is, and I think it's a mark of consistency. Consistency. And that's what Aaliyah Boston's all about. That's what Sylvia Fowles has been all about her entire career. So it kind of paints a picture of what's in the future for Aaliyah Boston, the type of pro that she can be. And they dominate without it looking like they're dominating, right? You look up and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, they have a double-double. What it's going to mean for Aaliyah Boston is different because she just wants to win. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and as good as she is at basketball, she says she wants to be as good on TikTok dancing. Okay, sis, do you. That's going to do it for us here at the half. Colonial life has been absolutely lit it. We get it back to our all-female broadcast, Carolyn, Courtney, and Holly. Take it from here for the second half. Ladies, thank you. What an environment it has already been inside Colonial Life. And guess what? We still have 20 minutes of basketball to play. Aaliyah Boston, eight points, eight rebounds in that first half. She is looking for her 19th straight double-double, which would tie an SEC record set by Sylvia Fowles. It hasn't happened in the last 20 years, but guess what? Ray Burrell is trying to effort this Tennessee team into an upset of the number one team in the nation. Burrell with nine points in this game to lead the Lady Vols. And I'm pretty sure we're in for a battle the rest of the way. Of course, South Carolina leading here at the break. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Pack. And it was weird to see South Carolina come up, start this game, and not go inside to Aaliyah Boston right away. Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson were taking the majority of the shots in the first half. They were 5 of 19 from the floor combined. Once South Carolina got behind, what did they do? They started going inside and going in the paint. But on the other side, I think that Ray Burrell only has, she has 12 field goal attempts. That's not enough for me. She's the go-to. She is the player for Tennessee who can make it happen. South Carolina to slow her down, put rebuild there, but I don't care. Give the ball to Ray Burrell. Holly Rowe caught up with Tennessee coming out of the locker room. Kelly Harper was passionate about her team. She said, we are fighting. We are in position, but we've got to do a better job, particularly on rebounding. We all five on the floor have to be ball hawks right now. Anybody that's free has to go for the ball. She said she's also gotten some really good looks. She's pleased with the looks they've got, but she said when we get inside, just got to settle down and finish strong. Tennessee is second in the nation in rebounds per game, but they are minus 13 on the boards right now. The last time that happened was January 2020 against LSU, but they won that basketball game. Tennessee's going to have to up their rebounding, like Holly said, if they want to get back in this one. South Carolina is reachable right now, just a 32-23 lead. Well, Tennessee missed nine of its last 10 shots. And Kelly Harper told Holly also, you know what, they got to do that. They got to be able to score. But I like who they went to, Ray Burrell, to start this half. South Carolina was in a drought, too. They were 0 for their last eight before Zaya Cook just woke the crowd up. Now, I like that shot from Zaya Cook. It was in rhythm. It wasn't a force off the bounce, but a catch and shoot to establish offensively. And the missed layups continue. There's one. Tess Darby off the window. Bree Beal trying to work inside on Tamari Key. Zaya Cook's got 10 points to lead South Carolina. I like the catch and shoot, and there's enough time. She gets her feet set. She finds the target. She pulls the trigger and knocks it down. 
Here comes Aaliyah Boston, top of the key to Henderson. South Carolina got in some foul trouble. All three of their main big post players were on the bench with two fouls at the end of the second quarter. The good news is Tennessee wasn't hitting shots. This Tennessee team without their leading scorer and rebounder, their leading assister and their leading steals getter as Alexis Dye hits from the baseline. It's one of the numerous injuries for Tennessee as you see Jordan Horston on the sidelines with a fractured dislocation of her elbow so suffered Thursday in their game over Alabama. They've already lost Kean Green, who was a main leader on this team and a main depth provider in the post. Ray Burrell was out for 12 games. They lost Marta Suarez, a starter, before the season even began. Well, I think that they have learned some resiliency, being able to battle fight through adversity. Kelly Harper has to be pleased with the fight her team has shown through the first part of this ball game. That's the third on Victoria Saxon. What did Kelly Harper tell us last night? This team, they're competitors. Well, look at their head coach. Yeah. You know, Kelly Harper <laughs> was a head coach when she was Kelly Jolly being the point guard for Pat Summit. And Tamari Key with the bucket. Puts Tennessee within five. Tennessee has led by three points in this game. South Carolina's largest lead has been 12. There's a foul down low on Tamari Key. Her third. Now you take Tamari Key out of the game, you bring in Sarah Puckett. This is where it would be really nice to have a player like Kean Green that you could bring in that depth in the post. But you look at South Carolina, Camila Cardoso and Aaliyah Boston are head, about a head length taller than their defenders. Second foul on Tess Darby. This has been a 7-0 run by Tennessee over the last minute, 19 seconds. Zaya Cook trying to end it at the free throw line. Cook gets the second. Ray Burrell, she's at the top of your screen. Alexis Dye is going to pull up in the paint. Another foul on Tennessee. South Carolina ball. This one on Jordan Walker. Second on Walker. I want to get a flow in this ball game. Let the players get up and down. There's stoppage on every possession. And with the height advantage, Cardoso. And Aaliyah Boston, you got to go high-low. Just play that all day long. It doesn't need to be complicated. And with Cardoso and Boston in the game, they put Boston at the four. Bree Beal for three. The defensive stoppers got a bucket, too. Her 12th three-pointer of the season. Tess Darby turns it over. If Aaliyah Boston could just get a touch, let her touch it, attracts the defense. You saw Tess Darby step in. She wasn't going to guard Bree Bill, and Bill made her pay. And South Carolina gets the ball back quickly thanks to Tennessee's seventh turnover. Mm. If you're a Gamecock, you love to see it. She's a rebound away from her 19th straight double-double. Do you see the footwork on that move? Wow. Smooth. <laughs> Henderson short. Three chances for South Carolina. And it's Tennessee basketball. That's the third on Beal. 
South Carolina's Aaliyah Boston needs one rebound right now for her 19th straight double-double. That would tie Sylvia Fowles for the most consecutive in the last 20 years in the SEC. That is amazing. The junior Aaliyah Boston, the work that she has put in. She's gotten herself in fabulous shape. Dropped some weight, built some strength, worked on her footwork. Brooklyn Miles in the lane. But Tennessee's not going away. But Ray Burrell has only taken one shot in the third quarter. Yeah, I think Burrell needs to get more touches. Oh, why did Zion Cook not give Aaliyah Boston the basketball? Ray Burrell whistled for her first foul on that play. You look at the seal that Aaliyah Boston had. That was a tough two as opposed to getting to an easy one going to Aaliyah Boston. Look, Zaya Cook's guarding Ray Burrell. Ray Burrell could post her up. There's a size advantage. Now Jordan Walker with a tough shot for Tennessee. Inside to Boston. so fast. And Ray Burrell responds on the other end. That's, that's who's got to have the ball for Tennessee is Ray Burrell. Kicks it out, Sanaya Rivers. Jordan Walker stepped out of bounds. It's 12 points, nine rebounds right now for Aaliyah Boston. And Aaliyah Boston, she's got 12 points, nine rebounds. She's one away of tying the double-double record. Stay tuned, come back, watch history be made. One rebound from history, Aaliyah Boston, who many say is the National Player of the Year, needs one rebound for her 19th consecutive double-double. That would tie Sylvia Fowles for the SEC record. Let's take a look at our SoFi. Our net games brought to you by SoFi, and it's going to Boston. When the offense gets stagnant for South Carolina, that's where you can go to. Number four in white, Aaliyah Boston, and she does it in a number of different ways. Face up jumper, taking it down low. She's got terrific footwork underneath. Yeah, Miss Boston, this is all about business. Yeah, Holly, she is an amazing player to watch. And as we said, just one rebound away from history. That's right. As you watch those highlights, it's remarkable how she's just unbothered by physicality. She grew up playing in a boys league because they didn't have a girls league on the island. And so she grew up playing against much bigger, stronger guys. She even has a pretty famous story about her beating a guy that's currently playing Division I. I'll keep his name private. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's not bothered by that physicality. She spins, she moves, she uses her footwork, and that's what's made her so special. You know, Holly, ever since she's come to Colum Columbia and doing her game, she has said, I like physicality. I like the contact. She, she welcomes that. She, that's how she wants to play. And most players that size, they have to learn that. No, you didn't have to teach that to Aaliyah Boston. There's the rebound. History for Boston, 19 straight. Double doubles. Nineteen games of excellence on both ends of the floor. For she, Aaliyah Boston. And she's not done. It's only the third quarter. <laughs> I mean, get her streak of double doubles. Burrell misses everything. Double dribble on Zaya Cook. 
When your name is on the screen with Sylvia Fowles, you know you're doing something right. Absolutely, Sylvia Fowles. That's an Olympian. That's a WNBA champion. That's a player that has made it to the Final Four, an All-American. And so those are the footsteps that Aaliyah Boston is tracking. She's on her way as well. That Look, check. Now she holds the record of consecutive double-doubles in the NCAA regular season. 19 straight, 20 on the season for Aaliyah Boston. The ball slips out of the hands of Saniya Rivers. Sarah Puckett is back up for Tennessee. She slipped mid-floor. You know, now with Ray Burrell out of the game, Sarah Puckett has been an offensive weapon for Tennessee. Puckett averages seven points per game, shooting 47% from the field, but she's 0 for 3 today. Foul on Henderson. Second foul on Henderson. Go inside to Key. Camila Cardoso has been so tough on Tamari Key. Well, here's the thing. When you're going against a player that is the same height as you, you've got to bury him first. Get a foot in the paint. Gain the advantage. Make the defense have to commit. Otherwise, you're going to have to do that right there. Have to try to score over instead of going around. And Cardoso is going to get the rebound on the miss. Don Staley wanted a foul. She wanted the and one. Destiny Henderson, cool, calm, collected. She seemed unbothered. Oh, and Tamari Key got loose, got behind Cardoso. See, that's when you give the ball to the big girl inside, when she gains the advantage. Henny's just on repeat on the other end. The paint point battle is even right now at 24 apiece. Sanaya Rivers, breakaway. Timeout, Tennessee. Debo Samuel, one of the 18,000 in this sold out crowd, the former South Carolina wide receiver playing for the 49ers. But he likes this, a little breakaway from Destiny Henderson. South Carolina leads 14-0 in fast break points, and it has a lot to do with number three in white, Destiny Henderson. Her speed, her quickness, her savvy to get all the way to the basket. Henderson with nine points, five rebounds, three assists. The fast break points are hurting Tennessee big time. As you said, South Carolina with 14 of them. Tennessee with none. South Carolina with something on the line, not just a ranked win, they want a share of that SEC regular season title. They can get it with a win tonight. Ray Burrell driving in. And that fouls on Saniya Rivers, her first. Ray Burrell is the one player on the floor that can make things happen. She's a big enough guard. She can post up if she needs to. She also is aggressive enough to the basket that if she doesn't get a bucket, she can get herself right there to the free throw line. You're talking about Ray Burrell. She has to be a little bit different right now offensively. Kelly Harper telling me before the game, you know, that knee injury that she's come back from this season, it's impacted her ability to drive and explode to the basket. So she's doing a really good job of adapting to what she can do right now as she still recovers with that right leg injury. And I get that, Holly, because, but she's got to touch it. And so if Tennessee has enough, the ball on offense, Ray Burrell, just as South Carolina is going to Aaliyah Boston, Ray Burrell, runner off screens if she can't go off the drive. 
Like she is the best offensive threat other than Tamari Key on the floor for Tennessee. And they did not rush Ray Burrell back. They let her take her time because they knew they needed her late. Rivers on the breakaway and the fast points. Fast break points rocking for Carolina. 16. Comes Morell off the screen. Kicks to Walker. Walker gets it back. Cardoso wanted the block with an exclamation point, but they give her a foul. Her third. Don Staley not happy about it. But Jordan Walker picked the pocket of Destiny Henderson, and then Walker continues to go at Cordoso. I don't see a foul up top. That block looked clean to me. Saxton, Cardoso, and Bree Beal all have three fouls for South Carolina. Gamecocks up 14. They've hit their last five shots. I love how Leah Boss moves around the court. She doesn't just stay planted on the block. That's the fourth on key. that size, that physicality down low, and now she takes a seat. Yeah, and she has that length. Really makes it difficult to score in the paint. Carolina basketball, fresh 20 on the shot clock. And you just throw it to Aliyah Boston. One second difference between the shot and the game clock. Ray Burrell has the basketball. She leads the Lady Vols with 12 points. Carolina will take it thanks to the possession arrow and a help ball. The defense of South Carolina, you couple that along with the rebounding and then the scoring options that they have. They can score inside and out. And South Carolina is on an 11-2 run. We've talked about how great Aaliyah Boston is. What about the greats before her? Well, there's a statue of one of them outside of Colonial Life. More on that when we come back, when we return from a message and a word from our ABC stations. My grandmother, Hattie Rakes, grew up in this area, actually four, block, four blocks from the governor's mansion to be exact. When she was a child, she couldn't even walk on the grounds of the University of South Carolina. She would have to walk around the campus just to get to where she needed to go. If only she was here today to see that the same grounds she had to walk around, it now is the same grounds that houses a statue of her granddaughter. Still gives me ch chills watching that piece. Ava and Roscoe, Asia Wilson's parents. Of course, she was the number one pick in the 2018 WNBA draft, the first national player of the year at South Carolina, a four-time All-American. 
and of course went on to be the WNBA MVP in 2020. They dedicated that statue outside Colonial Life Arena in January of last year, and rightfully so for a Gamecock great who helped Don Staley put this program on the map. Yeah, it really started with Asia Wilson coming to South Carolina, staying home in the state of South Carolina. That was a concerted effort on Don Staley's part to get the best players in South Carolina to stay here in and play for their home university. And how could we not dig into the numbers and compare Aaliyah Boston to the great Asia Wilson? You look at their percentage, their rebounds per game. Aaliyah Boston over her career is actually averaging a double-double, whereas Asia Wilson was just short at 8.7 rebounds per game. Aaliyah, uh, Asia Wilson's going to hunt you down for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the facts. I know she will hunt you down for that because I actually talked to Asia Wilson about this and she said, I hate it when we compare players like this, but I'm proud that people are comparing us. We're very different, but she is so proud of what Aaliyah Boston is doing while recognizing they are very different in their styles. But you know, greatness, you got to compare greatness against greatness, and that is what Aaliyah Boston is bringing, and I think that Asia Wilson set a tremendous example, a motivator for what Aaliyah Boston is looking to and continuing to accomplish. Boston making history today, her 19th straight double-double. That ties an SEC record set by Sylvia Fowles. Cardoso just using all kinds of height down low. And then clearing space for her teammate. Henny just has that quickness. She's not only fast, she's quick in getting by the defense. It's a foul on Destiny Littleton. Well, coming up today at 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, Penny Hardaway in Memphis taking on SMU at Moody Coliseum in about 20 minutes over on ESPN. It has been a sight to see here in Columbia today. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, Holly Rowe with you. College game day was here the first time in 11 years that college game day made its way to a women's basketball game. It's a sold out crowd in Colonial Life Arena. No padded stats or attendance records. They get people in the upper levels. It's full all the way up to the top. Tennessee with another chance. And the South Carolina team moving forward. They're obviously number one in the nation right now. They have been there for a while, 15 straight weeks at number one. They have 10 ranked wins, more than any other team in the nation. And they are expected to be the number one overall seed in the tournament right now. They can clinch a share of what would be their sixth SEC regular season title with a win today. Don Staley's team is dangerous. And moving forward in the postseason, what's the scariest thing about South Carolina? Well, they're going to be tough to, guard, to score against. Their defense is smothering. And then they're rebounding. I mean, they're the best rebounding team in the country. The only hope that you can have is that you possibly force them to turn the ball over. But they're the ones that are using the ones that are doing it to you. And here bobbled the ball before she went up to the layup. And we've asked on Staley before, is there an X factor on this team? She thought it could be Destiny Henderson, their point guard, who has really evolved into her role. I think it is Destiny Henderson, but also the depth. Yeah. The depth that South Carolina has. When you look at starting the, the game, you had Aaliyah Boss and Victoria Saxon and Bree Bill in foul trouble, no problem. Doug Staley could just go to her bench and go, okay, I got another slew of players that I can bring in. Remember, she has two number one recruiting classes on her bench. She has one from three years ago and the freshman class this year. We're ranked number one. The talent is here in Columbia. And that's how Destiny Henderson's role started for South Carolina. She was coming off the bench behind Ty Harris. But Holly, she has evolved into this starting point guard role the last two seasons for Carolina. That's right. Don Staley said she's so proud of how far she's come because as a young player, she had the safety net of Tyisha Harris that was running the show. She's had to learn to run the show in her last two seasons. And she's doing a nice job learning to play with pace, knowing when to do what and who to get involved. Destiny Henderson taking a huge step forward. 
one of the seniors honored here today as Henderson misses the three. When Destin Henderson found her own style of being a leading point guard, she's not Ty Harris. She's more calm, cool, doesn't get flustered about too much, and then she has that scoring ability. She can shoot the three very well and quickness. Tisha Mini here gets fouled. And you talk about the calm, cool. I, I want to show you just how cool she is. She Ooh. has the best fashion and the best style out there right now in the game. She's got about 90,000 followers on Instagram. She actually has her own clothing line. She's modeling some of it right here. And this T-shirt is so cute. Anything's possible. You can check that out on her uh, HP clothing line on Instagram. And I just love her flavor. You can see it on the court. You can see it in her personal life. And she has a real future in fashion. I'm just telling you what, her, her style is legit. Uh, Holly, I love the jacket that you had on from Destiny's clothing line on college game day. That was awesome. Oh, this was earlier today. You got a grade for this one, Holly? What do you think? I mean, it's too clean. It's the swaggiest thing we've seen in college basketball all year. And I mean, her style is so good. I actually bought a sweatsuit of hers that I will be wearing um, when I leave here on the plane tonight. It, it's adorable. Hey, there's a Hennet Things Possible t-shirt in the stands there already. Go. If anybody, <laughs> anybody going to find the fit, it's going to be Holly Rowe. Tennessee has brought in Kaya Wynn, who gets fouled going up. It has been a tough day for Tennessee, but they have battled so hard that you come into this game having lost Jordan Horston to that fractured dislocation of her elbow. Look, I've been impressed because it would be very easy to hang your head. You saw Keen Green that's in the second row of the Lady Vol bench. Those two right there, Kean Green and Jordan Horston, you think, well, if you don't have those two, what chances do you have? But the Lady Vols have brought the fight. Just as of late, transition got going for South Carolina and Aaliyah Boston doing work inside. Yeah, that impact of losing Kean Green the last seven games, they went three and four before that, 18 and one, and now you had Jordan Horston, as you said, one of their leaders. This Tennessee team right now, Charlie Cream has them as a number four seed, but he said on college game day, they could fall out of the top 16 if this game is not competitive. It's 18 points right now. It's tough, they don't have Tamari Key on the floor because she has four fouls on the bench. Tisha and me here on the trail. And that's a foul on Victoria Saxton. That's her fifth. Her senior day cut a little bit short. Saxton will take a seat with five fouls. Hate to see it for the senior. Let her play. See, no player gained advantage or hurt by that. That's just, I say, just let it go. That, that, that foul could have could have swallowed your whistle on that one. I got the chance to talk to Victoria Saxon yesterday at practice, and I said, have you thought about this moment? I know you probably don't want to. And she, she said, this team just means so much to me. She said, I am the mom of the team. At the relationships, the people. She said, I'm going to miss the coaching staff so much. And especially, she said, her roommate, Destiny Henderson. Oh, absolutely. And she is, I even recruited Victoria Saxon when she was in high school. One of the sweetest people you will meet. You know, her mama played in the SEC as well. And so she has a lot of the talent in her DNA of being a competitor, but she's a gatherer. The team just loves her so much. This ball will stay with South Carolina. Hey, 
Let's see if they called this foul before the bucket, if they will count it. It was on Alexis Dye, and it happened before the bucket, before the pass over to Leticia and me here. Look at the crash in the offensive glass. 27 offensive rebounds, a season high for South Carolina. They're first in the SEC in offensive rebounding percentage, meaning they rebound 45% of their own misses. Look at the size and the determination that they play with. Every shot that goes up, there is that effort to get second and third opportunities. And South Carolina ball. South Carolina up 62 to 48. Well, coming up when we are done, the U.S. Women's National Team getting ready for another match in the She Believes Cup that will follow us when we're done here in Columbia. Things got a little emotional. Leah Boston was actually in tears on senior day because these teammates, they all mean so much to each other. Destiny Henderson, Victoria Saxton honored along with Destiny Littleton and Alyssa Wesselick on senior day. Players that have helped this program, they have helped Don Staley get to where they are right now as the number one team in the nation. But that's not a new thing this season. Over the past three years, this South Carolina program has been trending up. It's been trending up since it won a national championship in 2017. Of course, last season they lost in the national semifinals to Stanford. The season before that, they were number one before the NCAA tournament was canceled, and everyone expected them to be that number one overall seed. Well, they expected them, South Carolina, to make a run for a championship, and I think everybody was looking forward to the possibility of Oregon and South Carolina meeting in a championship, and those two teams didn't get an opportunity to play. Yeah, that was when Sabrina Ionescu was on that Oregon team. It was almost a walking triple-double. Okay, but senior night. Let's go back to senior night. Did you see Victoria Saxon come out, and she looked at Dawn, and she wasn't crying. She looked pointed at her eyes. Yeah. She goes, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. She's just ready to come <laughs> in and play. Seven seconds. Shot clock did not reset. And Jamari Key with the takeaway. Key's out there with four fouls for Tennessee. Beal with the takeaway. You're not taking the ball away from Bree Beal. <laughs> She's too strong. <laughs> Dumps it off to Leticia and me here. That's a, the area where I think South Carolina has grown. Play to your strengths. Bree Bill, yes, she was open for a three, and she's hit one today, but that's not her shot to take consistently. She drives in, gets a little closer, and creates another opportunity for Leticia and me here. And Tennessee is going to take a timeout. 321 left in this game. They're down 14 to the number one team in the nation. This game started out, I mean, there was the atmosphere, there was college game day here. I think both teams came out with little nerves and started off rocky in this game. Well, you have two powerhouse teams that are meeting each other, and to have game day here, I hope it's not the last time. That was fun, and especially when you have an atmosphere like this to put women's basketball on the biggest stage in the regular season, I think that's tremendous for the sport. What has allowed South Carolina to push forward and lead most of this game? Going inside to Aaliyah Boston, creating offense off their defense, getting out in transition. Especially Destiny Henderson, she got into the attack mode of not just selling for jumpers, but getting all the way to the basket, keeping the pressure on Tennessee's defense. And look, South Carolina's defense turned up too. Just not as Tennessee wasn't able to get into anything offensively. Does it help to have the core veteran of players that South Carolina does when you start out a game a little shaky like they did today? Absolutely it does. 
you know, to be able to have the senior leadership that you have from Destiny Henderson and Victoria Saxon in the All-American play by Leah Boston. Jordan Walker looking for the layup. Tamari Key's gonna help her out, trying to get the rebound. And a foul whistled on Aaliyah Boston. When we mentioned this Tennessee team, Charlie Cream has them as number as a number four seed in the Spokane region right now. Their net is at 19. They're 21 and five overall. This is the first time they've had 20 or more wins through the first 25 games since the 14-15 season. 11 and three record against the top 50 in the net. Here's my question. The committee takes into consideration when you have players that you have lost due to injury. Does the committee allow these teams time to adjust to playing without those players? It's a great point. Talking to Jordan Horston a little bit before the game, they are hopeful that she does not have to have surgery as they continue to evaluate that injury. Is there a chance she could come back for the tournament? It is her non-shooting arm. You know, Kelly Harper said, we'll never make excuses. It is what it is. But she lamented that three weeks ago, this matchup would have been very different be before they lost two of their best players. And that is something definitely that the committee should take into consideration as they figure out how to play without both Jordan Horston and Kean Green. I would have to agree, Holly, because how they were playing to start the regular season. I mean, Courtney, you and I are texting back and forth talking about, look, this Tennessee team is for real. And then once they lost Keen Green, they stumbled a couple of games. I think that the confidence of the Lady Vols got shook a little bit. And they didn't know what they could do. They were trying to find their way back and now losing Jordan Horshin. But they still got talent on this team. They still have a system in place that can be successful. Yeah, and Ray Burrell is one of those players. And we've seen flashes of that tonight. 14 points to lead Tennessee right now. It's a different role. It's weird to say because we're so used to seeing her in the starting lineup last season. But for her to start in this game, it hasn't been happened very many times this year because of those 12 games missed with injury. Then they were bringing her off the bench to slowly work her back in. Well, one of the things you said, too, was in adjusting to not having Jordan Horston, a lot of times players would stand around and watch because Horston did so much. Now, instead of Horston out there, somebody else has got to do the job that Horston brought, getting on the board, attacking the basket, being that lockdown defender for Tennessee. Letitia well, Lemie here at the free throw line. Well, you can see more of the number one team in the nation Thursday night. Number one, South Carolina taking on Texas A&M at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. It's on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. This is a rematch of last season. That was the last game of the year, and Texas A&M beat South Carolina to win the SEC regular season title. But it's a different Texas A&M team right now. But there's going to be a lot of emotions flowing because that's going to be Gary Blair's last home game. He's retiring this season in College Station. I won a national championship at Texas A&M back in 2011. And at least a piece of that title will be decided before we get to that game. If South Carolina wins this game, they will win a share of their sixth SEC regular season title. Carolina will use as much clock as possible. Two minutes away from its 11th ranked win of the season. We talk about the only blemish on South Carolina's schedule is the loss to Missouri. I believe that it was a good thing that happened for South Carolina in terms of to recognize you're not invincible. You've got to bring it every day. You've got to compete. And I think that that was a wake-up call because that's exactly what Missouri did. In Columbia, they competed. And, and to understand everybody's going to bring their best shot. 
and it's only going to get tougher from this point forward as you're approaching the conference tournament, getting into the conference tournament, and then getting into the NCAA tournament. And we've seen South Carolina continue to grow and get better at things they were already good at. You saw the 31 offensive rebounds in this game are the most since 2005. Wow. The other area, though, I go back to the bench. The contribution from that freshman class the rotations that South Carolina can go to. Having Lily Grissett back, healthy. It came back for her fifth year. Camilla Cardoso, the transfer coming in from Syracuse. She's got so many pieces Doc Staley has put together. Destiny Henderson with the set up ahead. The volleyball set to Aaliyah Boston with one hand. Seven seconds. And a shot clock violation by South Carolina. Like Destiny Henderson knows she almost turned the ball over. You want to save the possession, put that extra effort into. That was almost a pancake volleyball save by sliding her hand underneath and flipping the ball up into the front court. You hear the cheers as Aaliyah Boston, Leticia, and me here. The starters sub out for South Carolina. Boston, her stat line tonight, 16 points, 12 rebounds, her 19th straight double-double to tie Sylvia Fowles for the SEC record. Well, Becky Sauerbrunn and the U.S. national team they are on deck in the She Believes Cup. The U.S. Women's National Team, they have won the last six against New Zealand, including a 6-1 to one victory in Tokyo. They will be facing New Zealand coming up when we're done here. And Kelly Harper will sub out Tamari Key and Ray Burrell. These are going to be key players down the stretch for the Lady Vols. Yeah, Ray Burrell is going to have to, number one, does she probably have to take it easy with the amount of minutes that she is going to have to play. But the score, Tennessee competed. Adjusting to having their superstar out. Kelly Harper has to be pleased with the fight. I know there's no such thing, you know, the moral victory and all, but the bounce back a lot better than how the team was affected when Kia Green, Kia and Green went out. They didn't bring that fight the very next game. They have done that today. Yeah, we've seen that, and they've actually outscored South Carolina here in the fourth quarter, 13 to 10. We talked about what Charlie Cream had said. Did they show enough fight? Did they make this game competitive enough? I think the first game out, first game back after losing Jordan Horston, yes, this game to me was competitive by the Lady Vols. Tennessee trying to keep that number four seed. Held ball, possession arrow to Tennessee. Thirty-four seconds left. There ain't no quitting these Lady Vols. They're fighting to the very end. They get that from their head coach, Kelly Harper. And a block by the freshman, Sanaya Fagan. South Carolina on the precipice of its 11th win over a ranked opponent. Performance by the Gamecocks. You see why they're the number one team in the nation. Columbia 
South Carolina is becoming title town, a share of their sixth SEC regular season title. It goes to the Gamecocks. Well, the Gamecocks had not such a hot shooting night, but it's the other things. It's the cleanup. It's getting on the offensive boards, cleaning up the rebound. That's what South Carolina can rely on night in and night out. And we saw history. Aaliyah Boston with her 19th straight double-double to tie Sylvia Fowles for the SEC record, and she is standing by with our Holly Rowe. Well, Aaliyah, this has been an insane atmosphere from the very start of this game. How did your team settle into it and really compete today? We knew it was going to be a physical game. Uh, we prepared for that all week, and so we just knew how it was going to be, so we just, we just played. I know this was emotional. Your seniors, you were in tears on the bench. What does it mean to go out with a share of the SEC championship and a win against Tennessee? I mean, it just it feels amazing. I mean, they came in, and they, they really were part of the reason that we're here, and so it was just emotional, but we did it for them. I know your parents are at home watching. What do you have to say to your family who's been so supportive and loving? Thanks, guys. I love you. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. A superstar in Aaliyah Boston helping South Carolina to its 11th win over a ranked opponent, its 13th straight victory, and a share of that SEC regular season title. South Carolina victorious in Columbia today, 67-53 over Tennessee.